every story appears ordinary until you see the core side of it. And what you're looking for is a story behind the news. We bring it to you from Lagos, the commercial capital of Nigeria. Giving you all sides and political stories round the clock. Every detail from the start line to the final whistle. Core TV News, expanding your view. Good morning, Court TV News on the hour. I'm Tolu Ojewumi. We'll start with this update. The ceaseless season of bombing has continued with Bochi emerging the latest victim. The explosion, which occurred at People's Hotel Brothel, Bayangari, in the state capital, claimed 10 lives and left 28 people wounded. Spokesman of the police in the state, Harun Mohammed, says the blast occurred overnight, but the source was still unknown. The entire building has since been cordoned off and the scene secured. The corpses of the deceased, Mohammed says, have been deposited at the Abu Bakr Tafar Balua University Teaching Hospital, Bochi, same hospital where the 14 injured victims are receiving treatment. Court TV News learned that five people clad in military uniforms executed the attack by detonating explosives and shooting at random as many gathered to watch the highlight of the ongoing FIFA World Cup at the evening uh, viewing center located in between the two star buildings of the hotel housing the brothel. Meanwhile, the Bochi State Police Commissioner, Lawa Show says one suspect has been arrested in connection with the attack. He urged members of the public to be security conscious and to observe happenings within their immediate environment. Some of the survivors of the Wednesday's bombing of a shopping plaza in Abuja had been transferred to the National Hospital. This is to ensure they get specialized treatment at Nigeria's premier health facility. But two of the nation's survivors have now died at the hospital, bringing the death toll to 24. Since the bomb attack, I had the sound of bomb blast, and by there I, I was I was heading to my own uh, server cafe. So and I discovered that bomb blast started turning me up and down. So the next thing I started running from one place to another, and I later found out that my brother is dead, and I'm alive. That is where they brought me here. He is now on his way to full recovery, but his brother, who he was visiting when the bomber struck did not survive. In spite of his loss, he is still praying for the people who carried out the attack. To them, so that God should intervene in their life. Because it's, it will not favor this country. It's happening everywhere. It's not good. So I'm begging God to intervene them. Already my brother is dead now. Even as I'm alive now, I don't even know what to do because he's the one feeding me. Joseph is one of 11 bomb victims still receiving treatment at the National Hospital. Many of them were brought in with bones. Some came with fractured limbs. The hospital management says two of the initial survivors have now died. Well, what I said that in, in all now with the four transfers from Wusi and, and the, and the Mitam Hospital, we have 11 here and now. But out of the 11, uh, of course, um, we've lost about two of them um, presently. So we'll see, we, we'll discharge one. Uh, we have one in the ICU, and uh, we have other here in the hospital. Other ones are stable. We will most likely will also discharge another one later today. Contact with bomb victims at the National Hospital was restricted. We caught TV allowed access to only one word. But the management is convinced that it's only a matter of days before majority of these survivors are well enough to be back on their feet. FCT authorities have directed the police to arrest and prosecute anyone found riding power bikes and motorcycles in the Abuja city centre. This, according to the FCT Minister Bala Mohammed, is part of efforts to stem the tide of terrorism and other crimes. 
The minister conveyed the directive to the FCT Police Commissioner Joseph Mbu through a letter dated June 27, 2014. FCT authorities reminded the police that the ban on the use of power bikes and motorcycles in the federal capital city was still in force. The reminder, according to the minister, is underscored by the fact that one of the suspected bombers of Emap Plaza was seen on a power bike by security agents. Mohammed also directed that all security personnel using motorcycles should obtain permits from the FCT Commissioner of Police and the Transportation Secretariat. In the meantime, former Vice President Atiku Abubakar has advised Boko Haram fighters to abandon violence against innocent people once and for all the, as the Muslim Holy Month of Ramadan begins. In a good message to Muslims issued by his media office, the former Vice President said the war between Boko Haram fighters and government forces has caused enough grief and created so many orphans and widows. He also called for immediate ceasefire and negotiations to bring the fight into a permanent end. Atiku added that if the insurgents are truly committed to God and his religion, then it was high time they had a rethink over the violent activities against innocent people. The United Nations Secretary General Ban Ki-moon says it is determined to help Nigeria and other countries in Africa fight terrorism following a series of deadly attacks. Speaking in Nairobi, the capital of Kenya, Ban Ki-moon says he had discussions with Kenyan President Uhuru Kenyatta about how the UN and Kenyan government can work together in countering heinous attacks. He said their talks covered major political and security issues concerning counter-terrorism across Africa. He also recalled his commitment to the Nigerian government on the fight Nigerian, against terrorism. Uh, this case uh, of abduction of uh, more than 200 uh, schoolgirls that is again very sad and tragic uh, things. Uh, I have dispatched my uh, special envoy twice to, to meet with the President uh, Jonathan Gullock and we have proposed a certain uh, support package uh, to help uh, those families and uh, uh, the, the victims when, and when they are uh, released. In any way, uh, we have to address this one very much uh, comprehensively not one single country or single organization uh, can handle this alone. I adopted this Lion Cup with the hope that all human beings and wildlife animals, they can live uh, in peace and harmony. A human being uh, should know how to live harmoniously with our mother nature. It is back in the news. The June 21 governorship election in Ikiti State has been judged the first and fairest recently. The Independent National Electric Commission INEC has been commended over its performance. The successful outing was attributed to the scientific approach to political matters by INEC and politicians. Our Ikiti State correspondent Rashid Rashid spoke with the National Commissioner of INEC. Commissioner of the Independence National Electoral Commission, Lai Olurode, said that elections in Nigeria is no more a game as usual, but a scientific engagement for any serious-minded player in the electoral process. Elections are more about science. They are also more about discretion, deployment of your discretion in ways that are helpful. What are the elements of a science of, a science of election? The first element of a science of election is predictability. Predictability is very important. You must be able to put your eyes on ground, you must be able to put your ears on ground, and you must be able to discern what are the forces that will shape the outcome of an, of an election. Olurode attributed the success of INEC in the just concluded governorship election in Ekiti State to its ability to play a neutral role in the emergence of the winner, a strategy he calls the science of believability. I started the scientific process is that of believability. Of course, there have been governors that won elections before in this country and they were not able to celebrate. They couldn't even stay in the state where they won elections because Nigerians or the people in that state did not believe they actually won that election. You can look at the backlash after uh, the event of June 21st. Everywhere was quiet because we didn't do any cesarean election. It's not an election by a cesarean oppression. 
He boasts on the performance of INEC in the last election, noting that it can be replicated in every other election by any other team with the same desired result. Repetitiveness. You know, in, in science, when you go to a laboratory, you, you, you do an experiment. It must be possible for another scientist, other than you, to repeat the same experiment and to come out with the same outcome. I can tell you if any other person from the moon, from Europe, from England, come to organize the election as we did on June 21, he or she will come to the same conclusion. Now that the All Progressives Congress is heading to courts to challenge the election process, alleging a faulty process, many are questioning the decision of the APC given that the election received both local and international commendation. Rashid Rashid, Paul TV News, Adoikiti. Living condition is making about a thousand illegal African immigrants in Israel stage a protest towards the southern border with Egypt. Details just now. Please stay with us. Core TV News now provide a platform for live coverage of political rallies and electionary campaign from anywhere in Nigeria. Political news stories, political editorial reviews, political discussions, personality profile, people's parliaments from the national, state and local government assembly. Contact us now on 0803-471-8550 or 0803-724-9733-01453-3407 at 24 hour news station. You can now watch Core TV News live from anywhere in the world on our website www.coretvnews.com Click on Live TV on our website and watch us live. And welcome to Core TV Primetime News. To follow us on Twitter, click on Twitter icon on our website. And Facebook, click on the Facebook and YouTube to see all our previous news production. You can also watch us live on YouTube. Click Core TV, leave a space, then news. Core TV News, a 24-hour news station. And a thousand illegal African immigrants in Israel staged a march towards the southern border with Egypt, and that's to protest against living conditions in the internment camp. The protesters were allowed out during the day, said in a statement that their march was in protest against their inhuman and unlimited detention in the Holot camp. Holot houses some 2,300 immigrants. The demonstrators say, they were demanding to be able to leave Israel and called on the UN Refugee Agency and the international community to take charge of their cases so they can immigrate to a third country. We are going to leave Israel. We don't want to stay in Israel. So this is our aim. The army stopped us yesterday when we, 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 we tried to, to reach to the fans and to cross to the other side to go back to Africa, let them kill us in Africa. It is better than stay in Israel here and every day you get persecution from the public, from the government official. Stop, thanks for watching. I'm Tolu or Jaomi. See you again at the top of the hour.